Okay, guys, we're going to go ahead. This is the revised version of the Neolithic Revolution notes. So if you already watched the first one, uh, you're going to have to watch this one so that you can tweak your notes and finish them off. Okay, so the Neolithic Revolution. Um, so just to start off with, the whole reason for me doing the video is so that if anyone uh, needs the lesson slowed down a little bit, you guys need to pause, you need to go over it again, or watch it a couple of times over, you're more than welcome to do that, and you can do it at your own pace. Um, so some of the essential questions, wait till after the video lecture to go ahead and answer these. So don't do it before, wait till after. So you're, what this is, what you're gonna be able to answer afterwards is what is the important, why is it important to study the historic, or sorry, why is it important to study the history of prehistoric people in and Mesopotamia? What role did geography play in the development of prehistoric people and Mesopotamia? And how are cultures, cultural elements, and social institutions reflected in Mesopotamian civilization? Remember, wait till after the video lecture to answer those on your, on your handout. All right, so the goals for this lesson. So by the end of the lesson, you'll be able to understand how Paleolithic humans adapted to their environment um, to survive, how advances during Paleolithic age made it possible for humans to survive in the Ice Ages, and why some historians consider the agricultural revolution the most important event in human history, and also how tools and roles changed as a result of permanent communities. Okay, so during most of prehistory, humans lived as a hunter-gatherer. Uh, they went ahead and they set up um, complex tools and um, they made knives, throwing spears, fish hooks, harpoons, sewing needles, things that they needed to make their lives easier. Um, and that's what made led this uh, new push into a new world. Um, so, Early man, they were the first hunter-gatherers, and then from the nomadic tribes that they used to have, they would start off by following the food. They no longer had to do that. Okay, so the Neolithic Revolution began around 8,000 BCE. This is a major development, and it changed the entire course of history forever. Um, it's also known as the Agricultural Revolution because that's when agriculture really took off. Um, the people developed farming and people used to, uh, to go be more, more, more mobile. They would go from place to place. They had to carry their belongings. They had to move around and follow the food. Once the Neolithic revolution came around, they no longer had to do that. They changed their whole lifestyle into a sedentary life. Um, farming brought more domestication. They had to domesticate plants and animals to make their lives easier. Um, so you're probably wondering how the heck you would domesticate plants and animals. Well, for plants, you'd have to make large crops and that makes it easier to harvest. So if you have a large set of crops, you're able to harvest it all in one shot and then you have those crops, you're domesticating plants. Um, the animals are trained to make work easier for people. That's the entire goal behind this is to make sure that your life is easier as a person. So animals made that easier, especially with all the new farm work. Okay, now all of this so far probably sounds great, um, but there are some advantages and disadvantages to farming. So to start off with, um, a good pro is uh, food surplus. Now food surpluses are great because there's more food to go around. People didn't need to go working all day long uh, trying to find what you're going to eat that day. Um, at first, all you'd have to do is you wake up, you go before we were sedentary uh we had to go get up and we had to go hunt our food and then once we're done hunting our food and eating it then we have to go and find what we're going to hunt and eat later on in that day and so on and so forth so your entire goal all you were doing all day long was trying to hunt for your next meal so that kind of made it a little more difficult to have time to do anything else well when uh, food surpluses came around from the agricultural revolution, you didn't need to do that every day. You didn't need to worry about constantly uh, trying to hunt down your next meal. Um, this also led to specialized jobs. There was more food and it led to free time, um, which meant everyone didn't need to be working constantly for their daily meals all day, every day. Um, they were freed everybody up to have different jobs. You got really good at doing one specific job and you didn't need to worry about hunting everything or doing every single job all at once. Everyone kind of got certain jobs that they were good at. 
Now, all this increase in free time also led to an increase in arts and writing. Uh, it was it allowed for more uh, more time to dedicate to painting and writing different things and so on. Uh, regional trade was also something that developed. Um, makes sense because you'd want to trade with your neighbors. Uh, another good thing that came up would be technology in order to continue this growth and continue this progression toward better and newer things you need to develop new technology to make those things better now with that also you have more people going in which more people going in means more towns and cities and while all of this sounds great free time arts you're all living in one place you don't have to move anymore it all sounds great maybe not all of that great um, there are some cons or disadvantages that go ahead and go along with the Neolithic Revolution. So, for example, there is social differentiation, and that led to social classes. You're probably thinking, wow, that's really fast, and well, it is, but um, people didn't really have money back then, so the first thing you would do is you would barter. Kind of think of it like in the cafeteria. If you have something and your friend has something uh, and you want to go ahead and switch, for example, switch my orange for your gushers, you're going to go ahead and you're going to switch them out and that's bartering. Well, people would do that because, of course, they didn't have cash back then, so you had to trade what you could. Um, but here's where the differentiation came in. If um, that that's where it started out with, if I have more of one crop than you have, that makes me wealthier than you, which means I'm better than you. And it means that I have more than you, so why shouldn't I be higher up in social class than you? Um, that's where that idea came from. It also came with the, the idea of economic inequality. Things are no longer equal for everybody. Oh, I went back, sorry. Um, the next bad thing that came from this would be sexism. Gender roles came into farming. Uh, there was uh, a huge uh, difference in what male and female roles came in. So technically sexism came from farming. Um, the brute strength that was needed to harvest all the crops and stuff really didn't come from women back then. Um, the next thing that probably makes no sense is uh, poor nutrition. You're probably thinking that makes zero sense at all because you're growing all this food. So how can people have poor nutrition? Well, as hunter gatherers, we had a diet of fruits and vegetables and meat. Once we became a sedentary and harvesting, you know, harvest growing people, uh, we, became, we began to turn to grains and rice and starches in our diet. So grains, rices, and starches are a billion times easier to grow and harvest and crop and produce than it would be fruits and vegetables and meat and continue the same thing. Um, it makes it a lot easier if we went to grains. The only problem is, is that while it is a ton easier, it's not healthy. Just think of it eating bread every single day. You don't eat bread every single day, all day, because then you're going to gain weight. Well, not exactly the best source of nutrients. All right, so the next thing that came around was disease. Now, the reason disease started coming around is because you're living in co close quarters with tons of people and animals, and you have that many beings all in one area. You tend to develop new diseases, and it kind of just spreads like wildfire. Yuck. Oh, wrong way. Okay, so the next thing, our sedentary communities began to form at this point. We had high starch diets and allowed for a sedentary population to grow and flourish. The first plow was invented around 6000 BCE and this made growing crops a lot easier. It made it a lot easier to harvest all of them. Um, it allowed the population to grow because of this and because of uh, the agricultural the agricultural revolution, nomadic tribes began to be dispersed. So the population goes ahead and grows from 5 to 8 million people to 60 to 70 million people because of this new shift in the way we live. So the agricultural community spread out, and then it started to displace and assimilate the nomadic tribes into actual communities. And um, the social organization all grew because of farming. Technology, by the way, that's um, what the, the plow was. Keep that in mind. All right, so the first two cities to develop were Çatalhöyük, and which is now in modern-day Turkey, and for the most part, and then Jericho, which is in modern-day Israel. 
So Chattahayuk, um, there was evidence of crops. They made a discovery in the late 1950s um, by British archaeologist James uh, Malhar, uh, Malhar, and he found um, art in homes. He found uh, different uh, crops. They found animals. Um, they found wheat, barley, and peas. Like I said, animals. So they found sheep and cattle uh, remains. Now, their religion, uh, they found they believed in some sort of mother goddess uh, controlled, um, uh, they believed the mother goddess kind of controlled the crops at the time. And permanent homes, and they also found that they had collected possessions. Um, there was new technology there, and that was their, uh, the, their beginnings. Um, the new technology were like the pottery and looms for weaving. And there's little examples. All right, so as far as Chattahayuk, like I said, there was a British archaeologist that found um, found art in homes. The, uh, the only reason uh, he didn't find more is because he wasn't allowed to stay and he was kicked out. Um, but And it was left untouched until 1993 when another British archaeologist named Ian Hodder came into, into that area to ex excavate some more. They What they found is that there was about 10,000 people uh, that lived there at um, at most, it was probably about 5,000 to 8,000 at any given time. Um, they found murals on the outside and the inside of homes and in buildings. The images were of men hunting. Um, there were some extinct animals uh, that were painted on there also. They didn't find any temples or religious buildings. They just found that there was a burial and there was figurines and shrines. So they did have a religion, but it wasn't... Um, but it wasn't a, um, a religion that had a sort of temple or place of meeting. Now, the next place, Jericho. Jericho was the first known city to develop because remember, we just found out about Chattahayug in the 1950s. We found out about Jericho way before. So it's the first known city to develop. Um, and the walls were built around Jericho to protect the ag agriculture from a surplus um, from nomadic raiders that were coming around. Um, it's uh, famous in the Bible, and it was the first civilization that was attacked by the Israelites, which we'll cover the Israelites later on. So they were also probably the first to develop warfare because they had to save and protect their surplus from nomadic tribes. They probably learned to develop their warfare in that case, too. Um, the next thing is that we went from copper to the Bronze Age. So we were working, um, working metals uh, were very important. They needed it for agriculture. They needed it for protection. Uh, the next thing is that early settlements started to shift from copper to bronze by about 3000 BCE. Um, this ushered in the Bronze Age. And this spread throughout the communities just like the agriculture did. So this went from community to community, realizing that bronze was a way better metal to deal with. It was stronger. It just it worked better for their needs. And this is the, um, the copper going to the bronze. All right, so future technology that came up. So human ma nature makes us want to make things easier for ourselves. Um, that's the entire purpose of technology, to make something better and make our lives easier and we don't have to work as hard. Um, technology does that for us. It makes our life easier. Um, we started with the wheel. So the wheel went ahead and led to other things. So wagons and then eventually cars. And it also led into a bunch of other things you might not think of off the top of your head, like a washing machine. Washing machi machine is in the shape of a wheel. It spins around in a circle and it washes your clothes. There's other examples of the wheel. Another thing like uh, conveyor belt systems and others that just make our lives easier. Um, the next thing would be an irrigation. So Oh, I'm sorry. It also led to the potter's wheel, which is also in a circle and made pottery and you can tr transport water and other things much easier. So the next thing is irrigation. Irrigation made it easier to water crops that made growing food easier, which meant all those harvests were a lot easier. And then, of course, the plow. The plows made it easier for uh, domesticated animals to be used and bring home more food, which meant that that landowner had more money and they had more crops to sell and uh, they were wealthier. All 
All right, so would any of these things bring up any problems? I mean, everything seems to just keep growing and making everything better and producing even better stuff. Um, so it really doesn't seem like they're having too many issues. Although at this point, deforestation starts to kind of happen in places where copper, bronze, and salt are produced. People need these items more and more, so they tend to destroy more and more of the Earth's natural environment. Uh, erosion and flooding uh, also start to happen where agriculture is disturbed by the soil. Uh, people need the water, they need the soil to grow more and better crops, so they're kind of destroying and flooding different areas um, in order to grow those crops. Um, the next thing would be the extinction of any large land animals and plants due to hunting and agriculture. Um, if they had a large animal, they were able to kill it and use it for either their fur or even because they needed the meat in different parts of the animal. So all these larger animals started to become extinct because of this hunting. Uh, some of the plants that they weren't regrowing right away also seemed to grow ex extinct. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the Neolithic Revolution. This kind of leads the way into our first civilization, um, our next civilization was Mesopotamia. So it was the first major civilization. Um, it, this is where the Sumerians uh, started off uh, about 4000 BCE. Uh, Mesopotamia literally means the land between uh, the rivers in Greek. And the reason that they have it as the land between rivers is that it developed between the rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. And this is what um, helped build the civilization. Most civilizations are developed around a water system. Um, it makes it easier to grow crops, to bring water. And if you just set up camp closer to the rivers, you're already there and it doesn't, it makes it a lot easier to have to take water back and forth. So the Sumerians were the first people to, um, oh, it makes it easier for irrigation and farming and food surpluses and job specialization and political and social organizations to all grow in this area. And then that leads to city states. Um, the Sumerians were the first to, uh, first people to migrate to, um, to uh, Mesopotamia, uh, they had a common language, specialized jobs, and they cooperated with each other, and they also developed advanced technologies. They're not by any means the only people or the last people to conquer and take over and take the place of uh, in Mesopotamia, but we'll get to those once we get into their next unit in Mesopotamia. Um, after this point, what you guys are going to do is you're going to answer your essential questions and your review questions and make sure your notes are ready to go for next class. Um, and I'll see you guys then.